Hey everybody, Chris Schaefer with Potsky Outdoors coming to you today from Northern Ontario. We're a little bit outside of Thunder Bay today. We're doing a little fishing for lake trout. Now, a lot of things are happening today. Our bait is so good that these burbot won't stay off it. We're here with Tom Armstrong of Tom Armstrong Outdoors. He's an outdoor writer up here. He's been here his whole life and he's out here to take us fishing. We're gonna show you how easy it is to catch lake trout with fire brine smelt and fire brine herring and fire brine anchovies. Let's see how we do. Ling. Yeah. <laughs> the Ling King. Not all that big, but hey. Awesome. <laughs> there you go. That's that's so cool. Yeah. That's Still cool. right in his yeah. mouth too. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, hey, that works well. Oh yeah, look at that. You can see this yeah. fire brine smell right in his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. You wanna hold it up real quick? For sure. Sure. Nice little wing. Oh, nice. Hopefully we'll get some bigger ones. Perfect. Yep, put him back down, you a bigger one. Real slimy fish. <laughs> lake trout fishing is a fairly popular kind of sport here in the winter on Thunder Bay and all of northwest Ontario. We've got, we're lucky enough to have a, kind of a large number of lakes we can fish here. And lake trout is probably one of my favorite things to do come winter. Um, and we, like I say, there's kind of a lot of areas you can go. We can fish close to home in Lake Superior itself or a lot of inland lakes. Like we're fishing today. Nice. Yes. Oh. Look at that. Yes. There's a laker. This lake trout. Oh, that brine smell. Purple yeah. brine. It was purple this time. Purple this look, time. Look yep. Down the you can see the purple down there. Purple down there. So he took that good. <laughs> okay. There we go. I got a nice, beautiful uh, northern lake lake trout right there. Uh, hit it on the purple brine smelt uh, on the way down. Um, just a nice surprise, beautiful trout. You can go to some lakes and you can catch small lake trout, get good ones for a fry, or come to some lakes where you've got some trophy fish potential and you can have a lot of fun. So that's what we're out here today in uh, a lake. We kind of get a, a wide range of things. You'll get some you know, small one or two pound lake trout that are good to bring home and eat, and, and then you get them upwards of 10 pounds. So they can be a lot of fun. So uh, something that a lot of people take part in. and. It's you know, a big event in the winter in Thunder Bay, I suppose. So. Oh yeah, it's a good fish. You told if it's a laker or not? Yeah, it's a burbot. Another burbot. Yeah. You are the king. Yes, sir. The burbot king. This burbot. Another brine <laughs> smelt. This one was on the purple. That stuff works really well. It's beautiful. Nice colored fish. Perfect. We'll fish a number of different areas. So we'll start actually January 1st, right around Thunder Bay is closed. So we head out to a place called Atacook and about two hours west. So it opens January 1st. There's some really good lake trail lakes out that way. So we'll start fishing there New Year's on. And then February 1st, most lakes in Thunder Bay district open. And then there's some that are still short, short in season. So open in mid-February. So we'll be fishing lake trout from January 1st right up until the end of March. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Another burbot. I mean, up here, so you can run two lines when you're ice fishing for angler here. So typically one, you know, at least what me and, um, you know, most folks I fish with will do, we'll run one set line and then a jigging line. So on the, the jigging line, and we'll often fish with these flashers. So this has been kind of key to lake trout fishing success, I'd say. It's both kind of interesting and uh, makes a very effective angler for lake trout. So when you get fish that are suspended throughout the water column and you know, you kind of get a 
a feel for, you know, fish are not interested in a certain bait. You can see what works and what doesn't, and often you can kind of tempt a potentially uninterested fish into biting because you can see everything on the flasher. So. Okay, what? Oh, oh yeah, nice, nice a laker. Yeah, nice laker. Smelt on right that smelt the again. Look at this. You can there see the, the chartreuse smelt. Look at that. Right down in his mouth. Nice. There you go, there's another nice northern Ontario laker. There you go. Uh, got nice colors on him. Big head, huh? Yeah, he's got a big head on him for sure. So typically growing up and, and up until the last few years, I haven't really used brine baits much at all. Just in the last couple of years, I've started doing it. And we've been using you know, dead bait for ice fishing and using for lake trout, sometimes for pike. And I use them a lot for lake trout. And discovered that brine is kind of a very you know, valuable thing for, for dead baits. So instead of using, we get some, we'll get say frozen smelt. And you know, after a while, these frozen smelt, you put them on the hook, they kind of get mushy and start falling apart. So the brine, the one hand, it kind of firms up your baits and stuff nicely, and so they stay on the hook good, they last a lot longer. And then just the, uh, the kind of, the color and scent and everything that you get with these baits, it's just incredible. Like it's just, they're neon green. So this is a, um, some smelt that have been brine, fire brine. They put them in brine yesterday, drained them out, and so these baits will be so nicely firmed up. And they got a bit of kind of flavor and color to them, and they've been just excellent for us. So we'll do I'll do some different brine baits. So we'll do like say these smelt, and these are smelt. We'll um, we'll use them very few places now. So there's some different rules in Ontario um, about using smelts. There's a number of lakes you can't use them in. So there's very few places we can. We can use them here. Um, but so when we can't use smelt, I'll often I'll brine herring. So I went actually to get some herring. One of the local tackle shops sells some stuff. These are anchovies. So it's all that same idea kind of thing. But so these are some anchovies. I soak these again in fire brine, and they're just they absolutely glow. They're an incredible bait. They look incredible. They're all nicely firmed up. So these baits will last all day long. So I'll, I'll use these anchovies. Use herring, smelt, kind of wherever we go dictates it. And like I say, they've been an incredible bait. So we've got. I mean, some of these in the chartreuse ones, we've got some purple smelt. These ones are some smelt I've put, <laughs> so it doesn't look it, but barely a few drops of fire dye. These aren't brined actually. We just had some other frozen smelts we thawed out and uh, put some of this new fire dye in. And the color you get out of these things is just incredible with a minimal amount of dye. So they're, we're just kind of experimenting with colors today. and. I mean, they just look awesome. They're just kind of, they just bring out the shine, I guess you can say, and they're a pretty impressive looking bait, so. He's not too spicy. He doesn't feel too weighty. Does that mean he's a burbot? No, he shouldn't be, but he's not pulling, so. Bubbles. Laker. Yes. Yeah, that's a guy. Nice fish. <laughs> that is perfect. Nice. Good, good, job, good shot of the... Uh, pink. Uh, this guy's a pink one, isn't he? Yeah. Is there a pink on tipped on it? Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess nobody can say we're lying. Look at that. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, you can see it down there. Still got the pink on it. So we'll run a jigging line, much like this here. So this one I've got, um, so a jig of some kind. So I run a lot of uh, like um, jig flies or uh, or tube jigs. So this one is uh, just a white tube jig, and then what we've actually got inside here is a, um, I think it's a dace or a fathead minnow. So this is one a dead minnow, but it's been uh, uh, soaked. I think this one's been done in fire brine, so it's bright, bright purple, it's firm, stays on the hook. So that fish has been on here, or this bait's been on here all day. And I'll just kind of tip it on the tube. It'll also, when rigging these minnows on the tube, like that, if you get a, if you get the right kind of tube and jig that'll work, I'll you know, hook the minnow in there and then actually pull the tube jig itself over top of the bait. So it kind of keeps everything intact. And that way, this, that bait will stay on there all day long. 
you can often even catch a couple fish on there. So, but having that, I mean, the tube jig action and then that brine bait in there just uh, kind of really sweetens things up. We, like I say, we kind of we run two lines here. So one we'll typically set up as a jigging line. That's the one we showed. We're tipping the jig with a bait. The other one I'll rig a set line, and that's one just. I mean, some people will run tip ups. I like to use jigging rods of some sort, and. So, I mean, it's pretty simple here. So this one, I got a single treble hook, a light split shot to get it down there. And we'll essentially just take, I'll take something like one of these fire brined anchovies. So they're just, you can see, I mean, just the, the color and shine of that thing is pretty amazing. So. They're just neon green. I like to hook them, kind of, if it's a single hook, just behind the dorsal. Sometimes I'll rig up a, a quick strike rig where you end up with two hooks. Um, but out here I'll see, just have this dead bait. And for lake trout, we'll, sometimes I'll suspend this. I mean, I, I might, you might hang it, you know, just a couple feet off bottom or pick it up 20 feet off bottom. And just kind of having that dead bait hang with, uh, I like to have them hanging like this, nose down a bit. And it's just been a dynamite bait, so. We've been doing, even today, we've been doing well for lake trout and we've been getting ling on these baits and they look pretty impressive. It was a country music that was playing. I think right. it was. It gave me the motivation. Oh, He's close. He is close? Yeah. Can you see him? He's starting to spin around. Can we do it? Braid and then a 12 pound mono meter. Oh, he's right here. That's a big trip. So he's, uh, he's off? Uh, I got nothing. Oh. Okay. Oh. 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 Nice. No, you could put him in the other hole and put him in the For sure. You, you want me to take that one out? That's a, it's a good fish. That's got to be my trout. That's a good fish Yeah, that's a wing. Oh, there it is right there. Yeah, yeah it's a good wing. Is it a wing? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sure is. They don't call him the Ling King for nothing, folks. <laughs> <laughs> this is nice the legend. Look at this. <laughs> Fish He's getting milked again. Is, is he? Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> another nice ling on the smelt. Green smelt. So we just listened to Tom talk about the difference between what he's done with the brine baits versus uh, having fire dye uh, solely just on a bait. And if you look down below here, all the baits have been brined except for the one in the middle. So when you look at the one in the middle and you compare it to those other two, you can see the one in the middle is a little bit mushy. Uh, it, it looks like it could break apart pretty evenly. Uh, and at the same time, look at the scales on it. They're not flashy and uh, they're not kind of tight together. So that bait is not gonna last as long as say the chartreuse firebrine or the purple firebrine. So that blue bait was simply uh, some frozen bait that we had. We let it thaw, put it near the, one of the uh, My Buddy heaters and then just put some fire down it. So it changes the color right away, uh, but doesn't brine the bait. So really, you, you, you wanna kinda integrate them both. You know, you wanna brine the bait, which will give it color. And if you want those baits to pop even more, uh, you can add a little bit of fire dye in there and those baits will uh, literally bling. It's 
a good fish. It's gonna break. What makes you think it's a laker? Uh, just, just the way it's fighting. Yeah, just he keeps running. He's got a lot of power. Yeah, okay, just undid it. First. Okay, yeah, just place it down by the hole. Just try and take it off the wood there. What do we got here, Landon? Oh, we got a laker for sure. Yeah. Feels the same as the other one there. I don't think so. If it is, it's a, it's a big one. Is him? No. Ah, oh, he's getting there now. He's gonna take a free run, so yeah. Holy! Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's a maker for sure. Oh, <laughs> giving it. You know if this was purple or chartreuse? Uh, this one was chartreuse. They don't. They don't seem to care. No, no, they like them both. Oh, there he is. Yeah, that's a good one. Look at his hand. Get on his hand. That is so cool. Look at that. Put the spool closer to the hole when he runs. You see the spool go. It's not huge, but he's a good fighter. There we go, got another nice lake trout on the, uh, the shark trout's Brian Smelt there. Uh, put up a great fight, was fighting for him probably 10 minutes I'd say. And just another beautiful Northern Ontario laker right there. Hit her, hit it, hit it, boom! Out of no yes sir! <laughs> You can tell? I'm pretty sure it's a wake trout. Sure. Oh, there it is. Big trout! Big trout! Nice trout. Oh, grab the camera on the pole. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. oh yes. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Another nice uh, Northwestern Ontario lake trout, chartreuse uh, brine smelt, beautiful fish. That one's got a lot more color than the last one did actually. Great fight. Awesome day on the ice.